Dr. Kevin Endy again, summarizing some of the article points on uh, Dr. Epstein's recent paper on hairline lowering. Um, the risks of the procedure are included in Dr. Epstein's article, and I do clearly um, discuss this in my consent forms for the procedure. Um, it's interesting that he discusses some of the risks as um, potential complications, although these are some of these are actually expected. Uh, of course, one would expect numbness after the procedure, and uh, this is listed as a complication. Uh, for some reason, I'm not sure why that is, but uh, he about 100 percent or at least 100 percent, because everybody uh, who has a hairline lowering gets numb afterwards. Um, most of the patients tell me that it comes back within six months. I know that Dr. Epstein has listed up to 12 months of numbness. Uh, however, I have never actually seen this happen. And uh, as you know, I perform this procedure on a very routine basis. Uh, most of my patients describe sensation coming back uh, either six months or before that. Telogen effluvium is something else that Dr. Epstein also discusses. Uh, this was a problem in the beginning when we first started doing this procedure. However, we have virtually eliminated this from happening uh, with, with using special techniques in terms of how we do the procedure and also the type of medications that we use. One of the tricks that we have is using Kenalog. Uh, Kenalog is a large particle steroid that can be used to help prevent uh, telogen effluvium. Uh, also using Decadron with the procedure it just has another additional benefit to help prevent telogen effluvium. And this has worked quite well. We really have not had a problem with telogen effluvium. Um, the other risks that are, that are listed in terms of visible scar and things like that, um, those are things that I have discussed in detail previously. I certainly do agree with Dr. Epstein that in men, if they lose additional hair, that this can happen. But it's unlikely to happen in females. Um, there is an easy fix if it does happen. Typically, one can then undergo a follicular unit hair transplantation through a variety of different techniques to hide the scar. And this is something I'm very upfront with with my patients, and uh, you know it's really not a not a problem. It shouldn't prevent them from doing a procedure, uh, and we can certainly take care of this issue if it does arise.